And a warm welcome to you all on this very special occasion. Today we are here at the stunning Sherbrooke Castle Hotel in Glasgow to witness and celebrate the wedding of Lisa and Grant. What a perfect setting for such a fabulous occasion. A wedding is a celebration of the love shared by two people. However, these two people would not be who they are without the incredible love, laughter and support they have been surrounded by over the years. So, ladies and gentlemen, young and old, today is also a celebration of you. Lisa and Grant's amazing family and friends. Bringing so many special people together on a happy occasion such as this is what a wedding is all about. So thank you to all of you for being here today. I'm just realizing you've got a mirror to look at yourselves. <laughs> so I'm noticing you looking over my shoulder, I'm going, who's there? <laughs> Should've got a curtain up, eh? I'm going to here. A big thank you and a very warm welcome to those of you who have travelled far and wide to be here today. Lisa and Grant are delighted to see you all and they cannot wait to celebrate their special day with you. Of course you're all here to have a party and enjoy a great day together and the celebrations will begin soon enough. 
But first, we have the honour and privilege to witness and enjoy Lisa and Grant's wedding ceremony. And my name is Stevie McLaren and I'm a celebrant and marriage officer with a small and merry band of celebrants called Humanism in Scotland. When I say merry, I'm not drunk. <laughs> I'm trying to get some laughter, you know, honestly. Was, that wasn't good. <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure to be here to conduct and legally witness Lisa and Grant's wedding ceremony. If you haven't seen a humanist ceremony before, where have you been? If you aren't sure what humanism is about, it is a belief that dates back many years, and the main idea is a very simple one. We put our faith in people. I know that sometimes our faith in others can be put to the test. However, humanists believe that people possess all the qualities we need to lead caring, responsible, and hopefully happy and fulfilling lives. We can all be considerate, we can all be compassionate, and we can all show that we care. And these are qualities we can try to share every day. So humanism exists to promote and encourage people to do these things. We are all capable of doing wonderful things and what a difference it makes when someone shows they care. Acts of kindness from loved ones and strangers alike can sometimes make a difference to your day, even in small ways, like holding a door open, sharing a smile, or indicating it a roundabout. Okay. That going on. They're not gonna start doing that after today. So try to be your best, because when we are at our best, amazing things can happen. Amazing things like falling in love. Lisa and Grant are two people who try to be their best. They try to make a difference to everyone around them. And there is so much love, pride and happiness around this room because Lisa and Grant are wonderful people to know. So they truly deserve all the love and adulation we can give them on this, their memorable day. Their married adventure will begin today and may their happy life continue to be surrounded by love and by you, their most precious family and friends. Now speaking of precious family and friends, we can now enjoy a reading from a fabulous guest who is a wonderful part of the family. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please show your love and appreciation for Sophie. When the one whose hand you're holding is the one who holds your heart, when the one whose eyes you gaze into gives your hopes and dreams their start. When the one you think of first and last is the one who holds you tight and the things you plan together makes the whole world seem just right. When the one whom you believe in puts their faith and trust in you, you found the one and only love you'll share the whole life through. We never forget the feeling of falling in love. Uh, writers, poets and scientists all agree that falling in love is a form of temporary madness. Well, I hope the insanity happens to us all. Falling is, in love is an incredible moment in our lives, yet it is but a fleeting moment. And the roller coaster of love hopefully happens to us at least once in our lives. And for some, maybe it happens a wee bit too often. <laughs> See if anyone's gone. Yes. But what about afterwards, when the new and exciting romance turns into a more normal routine? What happens when the dust settles and real life comes back to us again? We often hear the phrase, and they lived happily ever after. But we don't really hear about this part of the story, do we? Well, this is the most important part because this is when hard graft is required. You share your lives together. You look after each other. You put your partner first. You go through everything together and by your actions, not just by your words, you show you care every day. This is true love. For the men, the real challenge is learning to accept that on most occasions, we are usually wrong. Guys are going. Accept, accept, accept this fact, fellas, and it will be, be plain sailing. Now, staying in love is the tricky bit, and today we have a young couple who know exactly what staying in love means. Lisa and Grant found in each other someone who makes their world a better place. They inspire each other and they make each other happy. So, ladies and gentlemen, shall we hear the story of Lisa and Grant and find out where it all began? <laughs> the story is called From Greece to Glasgow. This is the story of the McMalias. <laughs> it was late August 2009. Wow, going back a bit now. And the holiday resort of Malia was still busy with thousands of thirsty young adults dancing and drinking till they drop on Club 1830 holidays. Perhaps not the most romantic setting in the world, but this was where these two young, happy-go-lucky 20-year-olds met. Lisa and Grant were both out enjoying their second night of partying when their eyes met for the very first time. 
a, a, a few words were exchanged, but unfortunately, Grant already had a love interest that evening. <laughs> what a guy, what a guy. Awesome. <laughs> so their first encounter was a fleeting one. Our story is going to take a few more days to get going. Grant didn't forget meeting Lisa and he was hoping they would bump into each other again. And right enough, they did meet each other again and our young party goers chatted a few times over the course of the next few days. There was an instant spark. It looked like Cupid had done it again. <laughs> Lisa left Crete after seven exhausting days, but seven nights of drinking rocket fuel wasn't enough for Grant and his pals <laughs> because they stayed on an extra week. Before Lisa left Malia, they arranged to meet for a proper date on the night Grant got home. They exchanged numbers, saving each other's names as Lisa McMalia and Grant McMalia. <laughs> and they still use these names to this day. When Lisa got back to Alva, she kept telling her mum, Jackie, how she had met a really nice boy on holiday. And as promised, they met... <laughs> Was it you? <laughs> As promised, they met up when Grant came home. They met near Lisa's flat and walked round to Vodka Vodka on Ashton Lane, where they enjoyed a few VBLs, that's vodka, blackcurrant and lemonade, for those of you who don't know. But their tastes have matured a little bit since then. <laughs> the evening was a success and a second date was arranged for a few days later. Grant treated Lisa to some chicken nuggets and McDonald's. <laughs> he knows how to treat a girl. <laughs> <laughs> then they walked Poppy, the old McFarlane family dog, round the local park. Lisa was also in introduced to Mia, a feisty puppy back then in those days, but she's not so feisty now. Aren't we all that's feisty? And this was the first time Grant's mum met Lisa. Eager to impress, Janice brought out the best china to make a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> Grant and Lisa continued to go on nights out. They enjoyed cinema dates and walks before becoming Facebook official just a few weeks later in October 2009. It was a whirlwind romance and life was never the same again. Summer came around and Lisa and Grant went off to the island of Kos for their first proper holiday together and since then they have never looked back. After the success of that first trip, they started to enjoy going away to all kinds of exotic destinations such as Mexico, Thailand, Australia, Singapore, Bali, to name just a few. <laughs> Ibrox. <laughs> Back home and always ready with their unlimited cinema cards, Lisa and Grant. Do we still do those things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You like a deal, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa and Grant loved going to see the latest movies and dining out. They had a great time together, despite Grant's habit of criticising the food every time they were out. <laughs> Apparently he's a bit of a Gordon Ramsay when it comes to cooking. In 2015 they bought their very own flat in the West End. And this new and exciting part of their lives turned out to be domestic bliss because Gordon here does all the cooking and Lisa here does all the washing up. Maybe not. <laughs> dishwasher, have you got? No, we no. Don't. no, she's not got a dishwasher, anyone's interested. <laughs> Teamwork really does make the dream work. The first seven years together, Lisa was busy with her studies at Glasgow Uni. In 2013, she completed her master's degree. This wonderful success led on to even more studies. So Grant was going to have to live with a student for a wee bit longer, while Lisa embarked on her PhD. She worked tirelessly to complete her thesis and managed to do it all whilst juggling an active social life, numerous friends groups and a depleting bank balance. So in 2017, four years after starting her PhD, Lisa MacArthur became Dr. Lisa MacArthur. <laughs> All her hard work paid off. Congratulations to you, Lisa. Incredible. After graduating, Lisa started a postdoctoral position at Glasgow University. And four very busy years later, she started a new and exciting role just a couple of months ago. Both families are so proud of Lisa's achievements and they admire the hard work and determination Lisa and Grant put into everything they do. Over the last 12 years, they have helped each other through everything that has come their way. 
Grant was amazing whilst Lisa worked on her thesis. When deadlines were looming, he was always there with snacks, refreshments, and sometimes both shoulders to cry on. Lisa and Grant are blessed by each other. And this is what today is all about. However, surrounding them is their amazing circle of family and friends. They know they'll always have an extra level of love and support if they ever need it. This is something they will always be grateful for. Now, having been told Grant's proposal story, I know that he is a better man than most. After a lovely Highland weekend away, the McFarlanes and the Connell clan at the Ardnamurchan Peninsula, <laughs> which is the most westerly point in the British mainland, a random unnecessary fact thrown in for the benefit of Janice. <laughs> Lisa and Grant left their holiday companions and headed off for some time together in Oban. Their stay was booked through It Is On, by the way. <laughs> Those of you who know Lisa know that she loves an It Is On deal. Is that still going as well? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was Monday the 1st of April and Grant could have proposed on that day. He had the ring, but he resisted proposing on April Fool's Day. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would have done it. I'm sure a lot of guys would have done it too. But Grant waited for the right moment and a more sensible date. But he didn't hang around long. He proposed to Lisa the next day. After a lovely trip to the Isle of Seal, they found a suitably scenic place and Grant got down on one knee. He popped the question and of course Lisa said, yes. <laughs> Grant barely had time to get down on one knee before being pulled up for a big hug. The news spread fast and their celebrations began when they got back to Glasgow. Now, after more delays on a ScotRail timetable, we are here at long last for Lisa and Grant's magical day. Today's celebration is more meaningful than ever because of everything we have been through over the last year and a half. We could all feel so happy and grateful because finally we can be together on such a happy day. For our fabulous bride and groom, their wedding day is finally here. Lisa and Grant, congratulations to you both. Today you begin the next amazing part of your lives together and looking around at your incredible guests. You will never be sure to finding someone to, to join in with the fun days and the Sundays. Now with perfect timing, I would now like to introduce two very special friends who would like to present a specially written poem for Lisa and Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please show your warmest love and appreciation for Zena and Catherine. To our bride and groom who are marrying today in this special room. We've written a poem to wish you the best and remind you both how much you are blessed. To Lisa, the stunningly beautiful bride, looking at you today just fills us with pride. You're a wonderful pal, so fun, reliable and fit. You're also intelligent with a uni doctorate. Grant, you're up next. We know you hate all this cheese. Loving the kilt, just watch for any breeze. <laughs> You can turn your hand to anything and you're a social butterfly. I'm sure everyone here agrees that you're a fantastic guy. As Stevie mentioned earlier, Grant met Lisa in Malia, a holiday to some of you that will be quite familiar. <laughs> Through the neon and foam parties, it was love at first sight, a love that would continue long past the return flight. Back home in Scotland, they continued their courtship and have been there for each other through any rare hardship. Long distance and job moves, they've tackled it all and make time for the important things, family, friends and football. <laughs> Together they've travelled from Cyprus to Bali and last year became parents to the wonderful Cali. Congratulations you guys as you begin your new life. May all good things be yours as husband and wife. Before we go though, one last final note. Grant be thankful isn't some inspirational quote. <laughs> Instead, Lisa, please join us in making some noise, celebrating the fact Saturday is no longer for the boys. <laughs> Lisa and Grant will now exchange their wedding vows using an ancient Celtic marriage ritual known as hand fasting. And in the past, a hand fast would mark the beginning of a couple's engagement for a year. And if they survive 12 months without killing each other, they will be declared husband and wife. The hand fasting is a symbolic way of showing that Lisa and Grant are joined to one another by love. A hand fast also symbolizes the fact that together you are stronger. Now Lisa and Grant have chosen to use two ties from their granddads for their hand fasting. This is to pay tribute to two wonderful men. 
So we have the McInnes Tartan Tie from Grant's Grandpa Angus and the MacArthur Tartan Tie from Lisa's Papa Donald, which are here. Now we're going to give the couple a little challenge, see how they get on. Let's see who's the bossy one, shall we? Would you two tie these two together to so tie the narrow ends together? Hold of it just now, thank you so much. Perfect, wonderful. Now, we are very lucky to have two very special guests who will help us with the hand fast today. Both masters of very, very tight knots. Can I invite Robbie and Jessica to come and join us, please? Thank you. Now, Grant, can you please present your open right hand to Lisa? And Lisa, place your right hand down onto Grant's and hold hands. Can you reach that, Robbie? Can you get over the, so the, 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 the ribbon? I'll tell you what, see, make it, call it a long piece like this. Make one bit go to the front and one bit go to the back. Do you get me? That's it. Now, Jessica, you get the bit that's come to your side and, and put it over the hands, that's it. Now, you can go as tight as you want between the two of you and make a little knot, make a little knot underneath. So, Jessica, use your hands as well, get involved. Br bring them luck. So, so one knot's good and nice and tight, Jessica. Oh, oh, wow, that, that's, that, oh. That, that's enough, that's, that's fine, because we're going to have to, we're, we're, we're going to have to undo that later. No, Robbie, stay there, stay there. You're not finished yet. Yeah. <laughs> They're loving it now. <laughs> okay. Well, he's doing a bow now. We're, we're only halfway through, Robbie. Right, that's, that's, that's Robbie, that's plenty. <laughs> we should have gone through this first, shouldn't we? So this, this first incredible bond of knots and bows is made by Grant's love for Lisa. Now, Grant, would you place your left hand on top? And Lisa, place your left hand top. Now, the ribbons that are hanging down, Robbie, bring them over the top and we'll do a knot on top, please. That's it, Jessica, well done. So just one simple knot on top is plenty. That's it, that's perfect. And just, Jessica, you pull your side. That's it, that's perfect, just that's it, that's fine. <laughs> this second bond is made by Lisa's love for Grant. Now guys, just one little knot on top, make it a bow. Go and give us your best bow like you're tying your shoes. Yep. Fantastic. And when that bow's ready, just you guys stand to one side for a wee second and we'll do our bows. That's perfect. Right, Jessica, you stand to one side, pop it, and you stand over there and you can stand to one side as well. Oh, it's wandering around. Third bond is made by, uh, by the love and support of Lisa and Grant's families and friends. May you all be joined together with happiness and love. Is it quite sore? Yeah. Yeah. Got some vows to come now, okay? Listen, Grant, whilst your hands remain tied, can you please answer your wedding vows together by saying, we will. Will you love and support each other and stand together hand in hand as partners and as friends? We will. Will you embrace the adventures and challenges of life together, whatever life may bring? We will. Will, will you share happiness and laughter when times are good and will you, will you weather the storms together when they are not? We will. Will you always try to put your partner first and encourage all your plans so that your hopes and dreams come true? We will. We will. And finally, Lisa and Grant, will you continue to support each other through life's tough moments and be proud of one another, grow old with each other and find new reasons to love each other every day? We will. That is the best hand fasting knot I've ever seen, by the way. Unbelievable. Now you can place it back on the table. Thank you, Robbie. Can you give them a round of applause? That was incredible. That worked a treat, didn't it? It's great. Lisa and Grant, you will now exchange wedding rings to represent the vows you have made today. Your rings are precious, just like your love is precious. Circle of your rings have no beginning and no end. And may your love be eternal like your rings. 
Scott, your moment is here. <laughs> Can you please present Lisa's ring to Grant? Thank you. Thank you, sir. You okay? Yeah. Could you please take Lisa's left hand and repeat these words after me? With this ring, with this ring, I promise to love you. I promise to love you. And be your partner in life. And be your partner in life. I will be your best friend. I will be your best friend. For all the days of our life together. For all the days of our life together. Grant, you may now place the ring on Lisa's finger. Wonderful. Scott, do we have another ring? Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Just repeat these words after me, Lisa. With this ring, with this ring, I promise to love you. I promise to love you, and be your partner in life. And be your partner in life. I will be your best friend. I will be your best friend for all the days of our life together. For all of the days of our lives together. Lisa, you may now place the ring on Grant's finger. Two rings are on effortlessly, there, guys. Brilliant. <laughs> you can hold hands. <laughs> Fantastic. Lisa and Grant, please wear your rings every day, for they are a reminder of the vows you have just made. May your rings have the power to keep your vows in your hearts and minds so that you remember to live by your vows. But we are not perfect. We cannot promise to always be strong, to always listen well, or to always fully understand. What we can do is to try and remember our promises. Your wedding rings can remind you to try and be your best, and sometimes a small reminder is all it takes. If you're ever having a day that you would rather forget, know that your wedding ring means somebody truly loves you. And that person will be there for you when you get home with a hug and a smile. Well, Lisa and Grant, I am pleased to report that you have completed the necessary preliminaries to marriage in Scotland and there have been no objections lodged. The legal impediments to marriage have also been explained to you. All that now remains is for you to repeat the necessary declarations before me in front of your witnesses and guests. Well, Grant, I turn to you first. Please repeat these words after me. I, Grant McFarlane, I, Graham McFarlane, solemnly and sincerely declare, solemn, solemnly and sincerely declare, that I know of no legal impediment, that I know of no legal impediment, to my marrying Lisa MacArthur, to my marrying Lisa MacArthur. Lisa? I, Lisa MacArthur, I, Lisa MacArthur, solemnly and sincerely declare, solemnly and sincerely declare, Sincerely declare <laughs> that I know of no legal impediment. That I know of no legal impediment to my marrying Grant McFarlane. To I marrying Grant McFarlane. <laughs> Can everybody please stand? Grant and Lisa, you have chosen to become husband and wife. You have pledged your love, your respect, and your commitment to each other. You have promised to stand by each other through whatever your lives together may bring. And now, following the binding declaration which you have made in front of me and in the presence of your witnesses and guests, it is my pleasure and privilege to hereby declare you, Grant, and you, Lisa, and our husband and wife. Grant, you may kiss your wife. Lisa, you may kiss your husband. Congratulations. Now I can't think of a better way to begin a marriage than have a drink, so Lisa and Grant will share a drink from the Quake. Traditional Scottish two-handled cup of friendship. And the Quake became an important ritual over the years and its flat, heavy shape and small handles means you have to use two hands to take a drink. If you're willing to drink the Quake, you were therefore willing to show both your hands. And in years gone by, this meant that the person drinking with you couldn't reach for a hidden dagger. So the Quake became a sim... It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at the wrong times. 
quite serious history, this. <laughs> so the quake became a symbol of trust as it offered your hands in peace. And thankfully, there are no such concerns at this happy wedding. And to, for today, today's quake symbolizes more than friendship. It represents Lisa and Grant offering each other their hands in loyalty and love. Well, Lisa and Grant, you will soon drink from the same cup. And by doing so, you are declaring your commitment to share all that your future together may bring. All the sweetness life's cup may hold for you should only be sweeter because you share it together. Whatever trouble life may contain seems less bitter because you share it together. Now, Jamie, would you mind being our bartender for today? Uh, and I believe, did you provide this fine bottle? Yes, why is it a half? <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Please, don't be shy. A nice, healthy jam for the couple. Lisa, you may take a drink. Lisa, please present the cup <laughs> to your husband. Enjoying that. So we're like from the same side. Should I go? Yeah. Yeah, oh, right. sorry. <laughs> It's your job to finish it, Jamie. <laughs> Today we celebrate two people who met by chance, but it was no accident that they fell in love. They have an inspiring story and I think we could all agree they promise to have a wonderful future together. Lisa and Grant, we wish you all the love, luck, happiness and adventure that the world can offer you. You are now husband and wife. But please know that we will always be there for you as friends, as family and as sources of love and support. Go forward together as the gorgeous couple you are with the gift of our happiness and love always surrounding you. We all love you and we cannot wait to be a part of your fun and adventures to come. Lisa and Grant, congratulations on your marriage today. May you be happy in love for a very, very, very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me absolute pleasure to introduce to you, for the very first time, please show your love and happiness for the very happy, the very newly married, Mr. and Mrs. McFarlane. <laughs>
I'm Graham, father of the bride. <laughs> Anyone that knows me will know that I'm a bit nervous about my speech, so here it won't take very long. So here we go. I'd like to say, I'd like to start by thanking you all for coming today. It's great to see so many close friends and family of Lisa and Grant come together. What is a very special day for them both. Lisa, I would just like to say how beautiful you look in and always, and I stand, stand here as proud of you today as I was the day you were born. Grant, I couldn't have asked for a better match for my daughter. Uh, you are a great guy and support the right team. <laughs> but I have to warn, I have to warn everyone here at the top table that your food will be served shortly and Grant will be pestering you for all the leftovers. <laughs> As he always says, nothing goes to waste. <laughs> Grant can also be very competitive. I can remember... <laughs> Ken, what's coming, eh? <laughs> I can remember when they were both moving into the flat in Ferry Road. The competition he had Sorry, start again. The competition, and he had Curly, Lisa's stepdad, step granddad, <laughs> who, had, who has a Celtic. Yeah, I, I, I read all this, no bother. <laughs> We're bagging nerves here, eh? Uh, stepdad, who's a Celtic supporter, with Grant being a Rangers supporter, he saw this as an opportunity to maintain natural order. <laughs> Curly and Grant were carrying furniture up the stair. Curly was in front and Grant was quick to overtake Curly. Before, before they got to the top, he laughed asking, what is the rush? Grant said, there's no Celtic supporter beating me. <laughs> <laughs> the best, the big difference was, Curly was 73, Grant was 23. <laughs> yeah, give me a second. <laughs> Anyway, enough about Grant. <laughs> uh, I'd like to continue by saying thank you for a beautiful, thank you for a beautiful wife, Jackie, for everything you, you do. You are an amazing mother and grandmother. Thanks also to Janice and Jamie for welcome, welcoming Lisa to the family and always being there for her. I feel very lucky to be able to now welcome you both along with Amy and Scott into the family as well. We look forward to many more of your home-cooked Sunday dinners. <laughs> uh, now into the most important person here today, Lisa. Your mum remembers when you came back from Malia in 2009 and you said you met someone called Grant and that he had, that he was really nice. <laughs> ah, it's murder, man, it's murder. <laughs> I read this perfect. <laughs> uh, who would have thought after the girls' holiday in Malia, both, uh, you both been sat there on the wedding day together. As our firstborn and one of the three loving daughters, your mum and I are so proud of the woman you have become and everything you have worked for and achieved. You've always been kind, considerate and kept us right, especially now you are getting a bit older. <laughs> <laughs> we love you very much. And I'm sure I speak from everyone here today in wishing you both happiness together as husband and wife and we hope you both have an amazing day. Now let's all raise our glasses to a happy couple. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. McFarlane.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Rogues, say front and centre. Quite right. Don't know why you're not outside. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to see everyone looking so well turned out. Keep this uh, short as possible, and we'll get the the mandatory nonsense out of the way, shall we? On behalf of my wife and I. <laughs> We, we would like to say a massive thank you for all making it along to the fourth instalment of the McFarlane wedding. <laughs> I've got a good excuse if I do forget the anniversary, but most of you probably know that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, it's been a long process, but really rewarding. Nothing breathes excitement into a relationship quite like talking about hair, makeup, and Hesse and rap four times over. <laughs> it's honestly, what a joy. Um, we obviously we really appreciate all the cancelling and rebooking flights people coming here today from all over the place. I think almost half of you have travelled in from Glasgow, so we're obviously delighted to have everyone here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so massive thank you to your efforts. We've got a multinational, multilingual group in the, in the room. We've got family, family friends, friends from school, football, work. That's obviously Lisa's work. My colleagues Barry and Wee Mental Davy couldn't be with us today. <laughs> They've sent their best wishes from Helen Street Police Station, so <laughs> you get one phone call, so I'm really, I'm really, really glad they chose us. Uh, I'd like to extend my thanks to the Sherbrooke and all the suppliers. You guys have been absolutely brilliant, changing dates, just putting up with all our nonsense, really, so big thanks to, to you guys. <laughs> yeah, we've been, we've been very lucky in the grand scheme of things. Uh, big th where are they? Big th oh, yep. Big thanks to and there some more of them. Yep. Big where's the Bryce's? Yep. Big, big thanks to the Bryce family for the, the wedding invites. For obviously you didn't get them for this wedding, but for 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 wedding number one they were amazing, particularly Samantha. So very uh, uh, much appreciated for that. <laughs> right. On to the paints, Graham. Thank you very much for. That's you. Uh, for <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for giving your daughter away today. I know you were very nervous, but you've 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 done excellent, and obviously really appreciate it. Uh, and and obviously only two more speeches to go now. <laughs> Should have thought about that, but you had, before you had three daughters, uh, Jack and Graham, both of you, you've welcomed me into the family from day one. It's not just from now. It's it's uh, you've made me feel welcome the first time. Uh, Jackie, you've always got food in for me, which is obviously <laughs> a big one for me. Graham, you've always got cold cans chilling in the fridge, right next to your 33-year-old hi-fi. <laughs> older than Lisa, which um, I'm told only his most special guests get to see it. Uh, there, was, there, was, there, was a, there was a few at this table that actually didn't get the nod. <laughs> it's, it's, quite, it's quite something. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. You've, you've both always been there for Lisa for long conversations about absolute nonsense. Uh, it, seems, it seems to make Lisa happy, so one less job for me. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps her off my back. Uh, the kids and grandkids of your world, and we know you'd do anything for all of us, so a big thanks for your help with Lisa's dress, the countless fittings, and all your advice along the way. Now, to my parents, thank you for not making a complete arse of it like you did with Scott and Amy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no idea what you were thinking there. Um, <laughs> what, one out of three isn't bad, and to be fair, Scott was okay until he started sporting thistle. Okay, pa pass marks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, thank you for all your hard work you've put into us. I know I wasn't the easiest child at times testing your patience. The time I tried to throw a stone over the house and end up smashing a window was a particular favourite. Boys will be boys, I suppose. <laughs> Seriously, old mum, thank you for all your hard work and for ironing my shirt this morning. Uh, Dad, thank you for driving us about to football all the time, even though it was just to get away from mum. There's, there's nothing quite like a Tuesday night game in Motherwell to, 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 to really prove that. 
Um, a particular appreciation for taking me along to Ibrox uh, for all the years, so one of these days I'll return the favour and get you a season ticket. <laughs> you're, you're getting on a bit, so if you don't croak it first. Uh, I've now gained two lovely sister-in-laws in Susan and Abby. <laughs> so, uh, third sister in total. Uh, Amy set the bar disastrously low, so... <laughs> You, you, you guys will be all good, like, you, you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, come 10pm, expect to see Susan in her 10th Prosecco and Abby in her fifth cup of tea asking the band if they could put the slosh on. <laughs> uh, you guys, you've put up with my childish sense of humour for a wee while now. Uh, so, they're obviously the things you'll do for your big sister. Uh, so, as is customary, we've got a wee something for, for the mums. There's a way something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're gorgeous. You, you got them, okay? Thank you. Oh. There we go, Jackie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. I did want to get something a bit more permanent, but apparently a Stephen Gerrard sleeve tattoo wasn't appropriate for a retired <laughs> primary school teacher. You, you were getting the Alfredo Morelos, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> so flowers it is then, one of those couples gifts that's clearly just for the lady. I've obviously got that to look forward to in future. Candles, pots, all that shite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, right, best man. Uh, <laughs> last. Uh, I've been, I've been avoiding reminders of silly things I used to do over the years for a while now because in my younger days I, I was a bit silly. I'm sure the, the table at the back can, can, vouch, can vouch for that. Yep. Falling off trampolines and things like that. Uh, yeah, so Scott, thanks for helping me organise the stag, keep me hydrated and probably, probably your, your best moment to date was getting us into iBooks earlier. <laughs> Played a blinder on, 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 on the pitch at iBooks. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh! You should, you should have seen the smile on my face. There was tears a lot. <laughs> now for the bridesmaids. You all look fabulous, and I do mean that because I can't really lie. If, if, if half of you are munchers, I just, I just, I just, I just. <laughs> so you're, 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 you're looking lovely, and obviously, it's, it's good that you have made the effort for a change. Um, <laughs> Uh, you guys, you've all been brilliant for Lisa, organising her hen, buying all sorts of nonsense only you wouldn't like. I'm obviously a bit gutted that Usher's never got me face masks and matching pyjamas. <laughs> and not one willy saw, straw on the stag, so... Work up with ideas, lads. Uh, special mention to Kim, who was meant to be a bridesmaid today. Obviously, she had, just had a, a lovely baby girl, congrats. Uh, the lengths people will go to avoid that awkward walk down the aisle. <laughs> Uh, ushers, cheers lads for being there today. It obviously would have been on a nervous route without you all insisting. I had a few few ciders this morning, so you're all looking absolutely gorgeous. You're dotted about the room, places yet, yeah, a lot great. Uh, so I obviously can we have the bridesmaids and ushers upstanding for a wee toast to yourself. Now for, now for the lovely lady of the day. Doesn't she look stunning? Yeah. <laughs> As always, my I add, I'm not getting caught out that easily. <laughs> uh, I, I was a bit worried. She kept saying, oh, do you think you like my dress? What do you think it'll look like? A bit worried in case I didn't like her dress and I had to lie because I'm not... Mm. <laughs> Uh, as mentioned during the ceremony, Lisa and I met 12 years ago in Mali, in Malia. After 14 nights drinking the finest Ruskinoff vodka, I decided one more evening would be necessary to see Lisa again. Most youngsters would be going straight to the Sandyford after two weeks on the 18 to 30s holiday. <laughs> she, <laughs> she seemed like an absolute catch. And, I, and apparently I was really nice, so... <laughs> 
we, we, we continued courting and here we are 12 years later with a Cine World Card, with a dog and a Cine World Card together. Uh, we've enjoyed travelling over the years to destinations. I usually go to the lads first, obviously to check it's okay for Lisa, make sure I'm a good tour guide, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, we like to explore beaches, nice towns, and then we traipse about for a long time asking in restaurants to do gluten-free food. <laughs> There, there's a certain buzz about asking a wee Asian man if they do rice noodles and gluten-free soy sauce. <laughs> should, should, should really get amongst it. It's set you free. <laughs> Today's been a long time coming, obviously. Everyone's been saying it for years. Uh, and obviously, uh, well, uh, yeah, but I had to give a healthy period of due diligence, make sure she wasn't after my millions. <laughs> um, Lisa, you've been absolutely amazing over the years, keeping me right. And I uh, hope ho ho we'll all agree, Lisa's done an amazing job putting four weddings together. Like, I basically, I didn't have a clue. William was asking me earlier, does this go here? I was like, no idea. Honestly, no idea. All I know is that this is not supposed to be green here today. That's, that's, that's basically all I gave. Uh, can't wait to get settled into married life with obviously absolutely nothing to organise. We can get on with life and an excuse for Lisa, or at least I won't have an excuse not to do the dishes from now on. Uh, Lisa said to me, and back in June, obviously we've thrown it together quite. Well, Lisa's thrown it together quite quickly. She said, "Look, with the tenth of October, so I said, what, what, what day is that? It's a Sunday. It's all, yeah, of course, we'll get married on a Sunday because Saturdays are for the boys." <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what she said anyway. Um, I'm so proud of how far she's come, working 12 hours in Morrison's to becoming 12 hours a week in Morrison's, being a poor wee student to becoming Dr. Lisa MacArthur. And an unbelievable achievement. Uh, we've been on some journey together and I'm looking forward to see what the future holds. Uh, and I was, what is it? I was given some, some husbandly advice. What is it, what is it? Whenever you're wrong, admit it. And whenever you're right, shut up. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> That'll not be happening. Uh, right, so if we can all be upstanding for a toast. To the bride. To the bride. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Lisa. So, obviously I'll ha hand you over to Scott now, but last thing, obviously we've, we've waited a long time for this, like just enjoy your nights, party accordingly. I want the dance floor later on looking like the closing ceremony of the Special Olympics. <laughs> So, hand you over to best man Scott. A tough gig to follow up from, a, from great heartfelt speeches here from Graham and Grant and Carr from McFarlane. I'm in shock after hearing Grant say some really nice things in his speech. Lisa, I wouldn't get used to that. <laughs> So this must be one of the world's longest awaited best man speech. Not because it's going to be massively good, but it's 12 and a half years in the making. Grant's capability to avoid marriage. It was, just... <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a skill that knew no boundaries and even a once in a century pandemic gave him an extra 18 months. <laughs> Fair play. So for those that don't know, I'm Scott, Grant's older brother, and as you can see, there's a lot of similarities between us, but to call it a few differences. So Grant is a full head of hair. In case you haven't gathered that one, Grant, Grant is great at pretending to be polite and interested. <laughs> pretending. And Grant is an absolutely terrible loser, whereas I'm going for a much more dignified approach to life. <laughs> So before I go into the story, I'd just like to officially welcome Lisa to the family. As I've said, sorry, clap. clap. <laughs> As I've said, 12 years in the making, you're a well-kent face around Arisig Drive, and I'm sure my mum and dad will continue to invite you up for many a Shish Mahal Sundays, as well as a range of crap desserts my mum continues to throw up. <laughs> Graham Muir can testify to that one. <laughs> so like any good story, or an average one in this case, I'm going to tell it in three parts. The school years, so growing up, going to the formidable Beauclair Academy in Bears Den. 
The late teenage years where Grant became known as a superstar tradesman and the Lisa years where Grant realised that Saturdays are for the boys. <laughs> so Grant, Grant, so part one, the school years, growing up in the mean streets of Bears Den. Grant was known for some obscure choices and purchases back in school days. He must have been the only teenager, teenager who owned all Harry Potter books, a BMX bike, and the jacket of everybody's dreams, a knife-crafted Berghaus Merapete. <laughs> a bit nerdy, you might say. So in Grant's Merapete years, this is where his reputation as a not notoriously bad loser started to come to light. It was in one of the, or it was on the many trips to Next Generation Club in Annie's Land, uh, with friends where, where Grant fancied himself as the best tennis and badminton player out, out of the group of us. Don't know, whatever. But, the, re but the, the reality is perhaps a little different where any sight of a defeat resulted in the, the racket being thrown across the court, putting you in fear of your own life, and bringing a game into disrepute. But when your middle name is Innes, I can sort of get this. <laughs> So thankfully Grant's temper and sportsmanship has changed quite considerably since then. So part two, the teenage years, where Grant became a superstar tradesman. So after a year, after leaving school, Grant took the decision to become a, an apprenticeship joiner, so working for City Building, where he became known as the world's poshest joiner. <laughs> It's a tough acc accolade, but how did he achieve this? Well, he became known for using big words like ridiculous <laughs> or taking in brown bread sandwiches. <laughs> so, on one occasion, we're in the van with an apprentice. The apprentice asked Grant, when's your birthday, big man? So Grant responded, she studies pharmacology at uni. So the apprentice, with a puzzled face and a puzzled look in his face, a bit like Stuart Hay just now, asked, "What does she want to be a farmer for?" <laughs> a meeting of Britain's finest minds. It's also at that age you start going out to nightclubs and bars, and Grant's staple items included a snap fax, my driver's license, and a small tub of brill cream in his back pocket to make sure his hair was tip top come one o'clock in the morning. It's classic McFarlane behaviour, trying to avoid paying a pound to the toilet attendant. <laughs> so, part three, the Lisa years. Where Grant realised it's that, it's not nice. Where Grant realised that Saturdays are for the boys. So it was, painting the picture, it was August 2009. Six of Bears Den's top shaggers are en route to Mali, a city in Glasgow airport. I always wonder how the holiday was. So Grant actually wasn't meant to come this holiday, but him and our, our friend Daniel made the last minute decision to try and make a name for himself and join the elite boozers. I think it worked out well for both of them, um, coming back for a damaged liver paired with a girlfriend. So see, this was at the right, on, right the young age of 20. And Grant's starting to get a bit carried away from himself in the coming years. So much so, at one point, Grant was spotted at Brayhead Shopping Centre one Saturday afternoon when Rangers were playing at Ibrox. <laughs> now, see, this is a, a, this is a bit... <laughs> this is a bit of a non-story, water under the bridge. But see, the issue at hand is the witness was one Kirsty Wilson who is all, a.k.a. Uncle Bigotry's daughter. <laughs> so the, this left shock and outrage in the Bigotry household. Where, uh, uh, Graham, sorry, Uncle B was actually rumoured to be seen pacing the streets of Lindsay at all hours in the morning. And at that point, Uncle B uttered the timeless phrase to Grant, you can always get another bird, but you can't get another team. <laughs> So Grant took these words to heart and decided to take deliberate, decisive action and declared to Lisa that Saturdays are for the boys. <laughs> so over the coming years, this philosophy manifested itself into many an overseas lads trip, stag do's, and multiple trips to the best part of every bar and nightclub in Glasgow. 
I think a few honourable mentions go to the Finiston Pub Club, followed by the Park Bar, Club Tropicana and Oak Couture, or the Westie special of Stoyer's Flat, The Shed, ABC and the Casino, home for six o'clock. I was in, I, I was in bed for two o'clock. <laughs> Amazingly, Grant managed to hold on to this mantra for at least a decade. I think the big question on every pundit's lips is, does he have one more term in him? <laughs> I think just, just to finish up, um, I want to talk a little bit about family traditions. So on our mum's side, the Connells, um, the key family tradition is probably a love for, for whiskey. Um, or my Uncle Colin's fam, family tradition. Um, <laughs> my mum tells a story about my Uncle Colin and his late brother Alistair, who in their 70s went out in a fishing boat uh, for a few whiskies up in Ardemurkin and ended up capsizing into the water. Both made sure they were okay and made their way to the local bar. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's some nice sentimental nonsense, nice sentimental nonsense in there about still being close to your brother in old age. Um, but the lesson I take from that is make sure you always go drinking with someone that can get you out of stupid situations. <laughs> And on my dad's side, again, limited in terms of family traditions, but my dad did pass on the sash his father wore for Grant to wear today. <laughs> um, so yeah, so thank you very much. So if everyone could be upstanding, congratulations again to Grant and Lisa.